Hi, my name is Rob Breener and I'm Professor of Organisational Psychology at the School of Business and Management at Queen Mary University of London. I'd like to give a brief introduction to evidence-based equality, diversity and inclusion. I want to do that by addressing six questions. Question one, what is evidence-based practice? Every organisational practitioner faces two main questions in their work. The first is, do I want to focus on what are important problems and opportunities instead of trivial things? And do I want to do stuff that is more likely to work instead of ineffective stuff? We can only answer those questions by the critical and thoughtful use of the best available evidence from multiple sources. And this is exactly what evidence-based practice has evolved to do. Question two, where did evidence-based practice come from? It originally started in medicine around 30 years ago. That's where the term evidence-based practice comes from. And since then, other professions have attempted to adopt evidence-based practice. This includes social work, policy making, policing, and over the past 10 years, management and human resource management. Although these professions are very different, the purpose of evidence-based practice in each is the same, to make better informed decisions, both about the problem or opportunity and solution or intervention. Question three, how is evidence-based practice relevant to EDI? There's probably more EDI activity now than there ever has been before in our organisations. But in general, the evidence seems to suggest that these activities are having little impact. Why might that be the case? One reason is that these EDI activities are not based on a careful analysis of the problem or careful analysis of the effectiveness of different solutions. In other words, EDI practice, I would argue, is not particularly evidence-based. Question four. How can you do evidence-based practice in EDI? Well, you do evidence-based EDI in exactly the same way as you would do it in, in any evidence-based practice. Let's take an example. What about the perceived problem of underrepresentation of women in senior management positions in a large organization? What questions can we ask to gather evidence to enable us to make more informed decisions? Typically, we would look at four different sources of evidence. These four areas are practitioner expertise, organisational data, scientific evidence and stakeholder perspectives. First, we'd ask questions in each of these areas to gather evidence to better understand the problem or opportunity. And if we believe we found one, we then use that same evidence to try and identify potential solutions. And secondly, we always examine the extent to which the evidence found is trustworthy and relevant. So, for example, in the case of underrepresentation of women in senior management, we'd first look at our own expertise as practitioners. Why do we think it's a problem? Have we seen this problem before? Is it a very serious problem or a small problem? And based on our experience, if we think it is, what do we think about possible solutions? That's the first area. The second area would be organisational data. When we look at organisational data about women's career progression in the organisation, what do we see? Do we see big differences, small differences? Are they in some places in the organisation or many places? And again, if we think we've identified a problem, what does organisational data tell us about potential solutions that might work to help fix that problem? The third area is scientific evidence. If we look at the scientific evidence around underrepresentation of women in senior management, what do we see the problems? What is the evidence? How good is that evidence? And also from scientific evidence, what do we know about interventions to increase the number of women in senior management. Lastly, what about stakeholder perspectives? If we talk to managers, women themselves, shareholders, unions, what do they think about this problem? What kind of a problem is it? And if they do see a problem, what do they think about possible solutions? So essentially, evidence-based EDI is a process of asking focused questions across multiple areas to try and gather the best available evidence, both to understand a potential problem or opportunity and also potential solution or intervention. Question five, is evidence-based EDI difficult? Well, I think there's two answers, yes and no. No, it's not difficult because it's not that complicated to do evidence-based EDI. It is not beyond our abilities and most important, we already do it in everyday life. Whenever we try and make a more informed decision about anything in our daily lives, in our, in our work lives, we tend to adopt something like an evidence-based practice approach. But also, yes, it is difficult in that it requires more effort and more time than just doing stuff. It means we can't just follow EDI fads and fashions and so-called best practice. 
It's also difficult because we may not like the answers we find. It can challenge our own biases about what EDI means and what might be effective interventions. Question six, is evidence-based EDI worth doing? The answer to that question depends on what you think EDI is for. If you think EDI is about window dressing and being seen to be doing something and to tick boxes, then evidence-based EDI is not worth doing. However, if you think EDI is about making a tangible difference to organizations and to the lives and experiences of employees, then evidence-based EDI is worth doing as evidence-based practice helps us identify the most important problems and opportunities around EDI and also those EDI interventions and practices that are more likely to work. If you want EDI to make a difference, then you need evidence-based practice.